Hey you, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to start off by showing you how I attach my panel uh, when I'm doing miniatures. I've got some museum putty here. I just put a little dab in the corner of each one. Put it uh, where I want it on, uh, on a board on my easel and uh, press it nice and sturdily in so that as you're painting along it's not going to fall off. I've never had a painting fall off uh, doing this. <laughs> At least not yet. Knock on wood. Today I'm working on a, a piece of Claussen's acrylic primed linen. I think they call it number 166 and I've attached it to a piece of gator board. If anybody's interested out there who's watching on how I do my panels, uh, just put a little note or, or comment down in the uh, comment section that, that's something that you'd like to see and I'll, I'll show you how I do it. It's, uh, it's pretty simple, but um, you know I've seen some videos here on YouTube done by people who've never done panels before <laughs> and they're showing you how to do panels. So um, might help to, to have someone show you who's, uh, who's done it before. So I start uh, in the background. This is another nocturne. And um, I start with the dark up in the sky. And I'm putting the paint on. I'm not thinning it down. I don't think I thinned this down at all. I started in the top of the, of the panel with the darkest part of the sky. And you notice here that I'm, I'm putting in uh, the lighter part of the sky. When I put in stars, I don't do that many stars. You you don't want to put in a whole galaxy, you know, just enough to get the idea that it's nighttime out. On a painting like this, or on most of my paintings, I do try and let some of the underpainting show through. Now on a nocturne, I always start with a burnt sienna wash. And if you allow little bits of your underpainting to show through like I have in the sky there or over in the foliage here where I'm putting in. It has a nice sparkle to it. Don't overdo it, but let some of that show through and uh, you're going to have a much livelier painting that, that has the feeling that there's some life to it. So as I go along here, I'm just continuing to put in some of this background foliage. It's not, uh, it's not important you don't want to put a lot of detail in just enough so that you know that he's outside that it's nighttime uh, and uh, you can always add in more details later on as you go but the most important thing here is to just try and get the value right and uh, and if you can get the uh, the color temperature don't over mix things you know allow them to uh, to have their own personality back there. But you do want to control your edges. You know, keep things pretty soft when you're painting uh, foliage at night. There's uh, very few hard edges when you're outside. If you go out and look, uh, everything is kind of softened up. I know I've said this before in my, in my past videos, but it's so important. Try and have a soft touch with your brush. Don't slam things in. Let the brush do the work for you. It can give you a lot of texture if you just allow it to. <laughs> I apologize for having my head uh, pop into the scene. Uh, the way I set up the, the camera to get the best view, um, it's right directly in line with where I have to refill my brushes. So I try and cut all of that out uh, if I can, but uh, there's just so much of it it's it's impossible to get it all and eh, it adds to that uh, ambience of the scene. For the background greens that I'm putting in right now, the color that I'm using for that is phthalo green. It's just one of those colors that you can't mix out of uh, you know your three basic primaries. And sometimes you just need a specialty color, especially if you're painting uh, these paintings that are night scenes. And so it's one of those specialty colors that you need, especially if you live uh, and paint the desert. The trick to doing greens though, on something like this is you need to vary them. Uh, don't make them all, you know, your phthalo green. You need to have in some of your warmer greens too. And if you do that, then 
the eye sees that there's there's subtlety and difference going on back there. And that subtlety is going to give you a much better painting. This was painted for an online auction and uh, I painted it right when the uh, pandemic really started hitting its stride. In the description of the painting I talked about the fact that I was dedicating or am dedic dedicating this painting to all those essential workers out there who get up and go to work and uh, show up to keep the rest of us safe. Just like this, uh, this cowboy's getting up in the middle of the night when he'd much rather, rather stay in his bed and he's gonna go out and protect the herd. It's amazing to me what so many people have stepped up to do. Yes, I'm talking about the hospital workers, the doctors, the nursing staff, the janitorial uh, staff, everyone who shows up that way. But also, you know, of course there's the, the firemen, the EMT, and of course the police officers who get out there and uh, try and protect all of us. And so I really do want to honor that. And uh, this was uh, kind of my easy way of being able to do that and, and say thank you to everyone. So thank you. Through this world like I have some idea When I don't, I don't And I take on the baggage Cause I think that I can And I wait for the right time To go with my plan And come to you And tell you how I feel
Pay special attention as you're going along to your edges. You can soften edges as you're painting like I do here, and uh, it's going to save you some time down the road. Also try and keep your colors broken a little bit. You'll notice that, that on the, the brim of his hat, uh, I've got some blues and, and yellows and greens in there. Uh, I did spend a lot of time to try and get his face just right and so I wouldn't have to go back in, but I know that I'm gonna to have to adjust the edges on that. But on his hat and on other things, go ahead and, and intuitively decide where you would rather not have hard edges. If it's not important, if it's not something that you wanna focus on, don't emphasize it. Harvey Dunn has a wonderful quote that says, never emphasize the unimportant in a painting. And that is so true. Know where your focal point is. Keep the edges hard there. Your light's the lightest and your dark's the darkest. But when you move away from that, don't be afraid to soften those edges up. It may look a little funny at first, but as you go back and look at it, it will all tie together. You just have to trust your paint. Okay. timed okay coming out of uh, out of the music I'm um, working into uh, his hand is not really that much different than doing anything else other than uh, for me to say that you need to keep it uh, very simple when you're laying in your values you can add your complications in as you go along 
but uh, finding the light side and the shadow side, make sure that you keep them delineated. And um, once you get everything kind of laid in, then you're going to want to be able to put in um, kind of your, your darker accents where the knuckles are, the shadows uh, where uh, the head stall goes into his fingers, and then keep in mind where those knuckles are. And uh, you don't have to paint them quite as detailed as you would think you need to. Actually, just having a little bit of an indication of there being a, a turning there is really all that you need. And so once you get all that laid in, then what you're going to do is go in and soften some of those edges up so that it works with the background. The shirt is white, but I know that I'm going to be working into this a little bit, so I'll put a white down that's lighter than what I know it's going to end up being because as I'm brushing into it it's going to tend to dull itself down and it's harder to bring that light up uh, especially if you're working with a white so I tend to put in the the very lightest part and then know that as it turns away from the light it's going to darken up a little bit now I can go in and add some knuckles and some highlights on there just subtly That'll really help to give that hand form. Working into his shaps, the, the local color in the daylight of these shaps are uh, kind of a yellow ochre or a tan. And so you mix that with the blue uh, of the, the cool light source and you're going to get a green. But compared to everything else that's around it, like his jeans and you know his, his vest, in the background, it's going to read like it's a uh, like it's a tan. Now, once I have that middle color down, I can go in and start adding the variations, uh, the highlights, and the uh, the shadows. Now, for the jeans, I'll start laying them in bluer than what they will eventually be, and then add in some of those warms to them to help to neutralize them a bit. But uh, Blue, things that are blue or white, when you see them at night, they can be quite intensely blue. So don't be afraid to add in some, some color in that. It's okay. It'll, it'll read just fine. So once we get to the belt and the, and the other uh, rope that's down there, there's a lot of noodling that's going on with the belt buckle and things like that. So I just try and lay things in as quickly as I can very simply, knowing that I'll go in and adjust them uh, as I go along. But I want to get that basic tone in there so that I can judge things against other things. Basically, you, you can't get it right if you don't know that it's wrong. And you won't know that it's wrong until you get all those other colors in there. So just continue to lay things in, knowing that you're going to go in and add some details along the way. Basically along the way here, I'm just adding details and defining what's down there. You know, you put the, the overall tone down, you put it down thin enough that you can go on in and uh, darken and lighten in areas that you need to add your highlights, that kind of thing. Uh, you just uh, put it down and keep going until you feel like you've got it as good as you can get it. And let's remember that uh, this is this is a small painting. This is an 8 by 10 panel. And so a little bit of detail goes a long way, especially on an area that's not the focal point. Now you may have noticed that I already had painted in his vest, his uh, leather vest. And uh, the more I looked at it, the less happy with it I was. So rather than make you watch all of that and then having me repaint it, I'm just going to paint it. Uh, the second time here and kind of explain it. Uh, when leather uh, is a little bit wet, it has this blue cast to it uh, at night. And that's really what I wanted to get across on this particular vest. And just the way that it catches the light makes it look very much like leather. But I, what I had done before was I think I put too much paint down. It really distracted the way it was painted as compared to how everything else was painted. It needs to have a consistent look about it. 
And the more and more I looked at it, the more I unhappy with it I became. So I'm just repainting it with a little more knowledge than I had the first time and a little less enthusiasm, a little more control. I ended up being much happier with this version than the last version. And, you know, I guess the thing that I want to get across on that is just because you've painted something doesn't mean that you have to accept that. I scraped off what was there and took another jump at it. You can keep doing that with oils until you're absolutely happy uh, with what you've done. Never let anything out of the studio that you're not completely happy with. I continue to do that to this day, uh, and I'm sure I always will. It's just one of the parts of painting is to know that you don't always get it right the first time, and you can take another shot at it. Take as many as you need until you feel like you got it right. But the main thing you have to do, if it doesn't come naturally, is you need to paint the painting all in one particular way, in one style. Uh, one of the things that I constantly am uh, experimenting with is different styles, different ways of painting. And sometimes halfway through a painting, I'll slip into a different style, and that can be a real problem. So once you're committed to that particular style, you need to stick with that all the way through the painting. Now, if you notice the horse, there's a lot of brown in this horse. And you would think, well, it's a night scene, so everything should be kind of be blues. Well, it's very much blued down, and if you were to see it on your palette, it would, it would look kind of a brown-gray. But because of everything else that's around it, it reads very much like brown. Uh, and that's what you want. I mean, you need to have some color in your, in your nocturnes, or else they're just going to read. They're going to be pretty boring. Make sure that you try and get enough color in there so that uh, it, it has something to your eye that's going to make it interesting. And you'll notice that the highlights on the horse, as it is in the light and is shimmering a little bit, those are all green because of the way the brown is interacting with the light. And that tells the eye that it's a very cool light source, but you still have the color. It's important that you have the horse read as though it's brown, but it's toned way down. Because giving that horse that warmth is gonna bring it forward, and it's going to give your eye that focal point that you need. Uh, obviously the face of the cowboy is the focal point, but that horse being brown like that is gonna bring it forward, and that background will recede. And so allowing some of those warms to come through is absolutely essential. A tip, one of the ways you can do that, let some of your burnt sienna underpainting show through in the corners, you know, in little, in little spots. And that will really help to bring a little bit of life to a scene that can be very subtle. Once again, thank you to all the essential workers out there, night and day, working to keep us all safe. Here is the completed painting. Once it was dry, I coat it with a very thin coating of uh, Gamvar satin, frame it, and uh, this was uh, in an auction in which it, it sold this past spring. Thank you all for joining me. I truly appreciate uh, you being here. If you like what you see and you'd like to see more, please go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and if you subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload new content. All right, I will see you all down the road.